first of all, let's give a, a little bit of a round of applause to, uh, well, I know Andy's not here tonight, but Andy Devon, her entire crew, and the police department for our uh, Night Out Against Crime and what they did tonight. Please give them a round of applause there. You know, uh, the, the, the concept, the idea uh, of, of, uh, of constructing the memorial wall here at PD uh, was not mine. It, it came about as a result of, uh, I guess, a, a vision of Ms. Linda Rumor, who's sister of, of Captain Chasson. And Lin Linda, I got I to gotta thank you for being persistent about it, uh, because her persistent efforts and, and the ownership she took in uh, making this wall a reality is really what made it happen. So, Linda, thank you for being persistent about that. The fact that, that being a law enforcement officer is more hazardous today than it's ever been is certainly something I don't need to tell any of you. If you watch the news today, we sort of wait to hear if something happened somewhere around the country to one of our brothers in blue. Unfortunately, you know, lately it's, it's been somewhat alarming. I think in 2015, uh, we've had already across the country some 98 officers killed in the line of duty just in 2015. Uh, here in the state of Louisiana, we've had nine. Nine officers killed in the line of duty in 2015, which is only is second only to Texas, which I think has 10. We still have three more officers that uh, were killed here in the state of Louisiana that were killed in the state of New York this year. Uh, so if reality doesn't hit home, I don't know what else it takes. Uh, but to say that, that uh, at least in my, in my opinion, uh, we need to appreciate our law enforcement officers more today than we ever had. Uh, it would be... I want you guys to give a big round of applause and a welcome to our new Chief of Police, Mr. Brian Zerani. Thank you. I just want to thank everybody for coming out. It's very important the support that we get from the community. And again, you're going to see the support that you're going to get from your police department. We're here for you just like you here for us. At this time, I'm going to retire PD-116, which was Captain Keith Chesson's number. And uh, that number will be retired today. So I'm not going to speak much because I know we got two speakers that really want to speak. So at this time, I'll introduce our sheriff of the Foosh Parish, Craig Weber. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Chief. I had the pleasure of beginning my law enforcement career at this very police station, well, not this police station, but this location in January of 1980, when former police chief Earl Malosa hired me. And I was a young rookie back then, working night shift. And I had two opportunities to work with Keith that I recall. The very first one was we were in some old school buildings. They had two old wooden school buildings that were makeshift police stations before this beautiful building was built. And we were in the office at shift change and it was a Sunday. And we got a call from State Police Troop C that they were in pursuit of a man driving a stolen pickup truck coming into the city of Thibodeau at a high rate of speed. And so Keith grabbed his paperwork and says, come on, let's go. And we rushed out of the police station and we jumped into TP9 a 1979 LTD painted blue and white and took off down Canal Boulevard or up Canal Boulevard towards Homa, whatever direction that would be. And as we got to about Talbot, we noticed the pickup truck heading into Thibodeau with a whole parade of police cars from state police and Terrebonne Sheriff's Office behind it, driving lights and siren at a high rate of speed. So Keith made a U-turn in the boulevard and blocked the lane where the truck was coming. With me sitting in the passenger side, <laughs> looking at the truck coming, having absolutely no control over what was going to happen, and thinking I might have the shortest career of anybody in the Thibodeau Police Department. Well, somehow, in a split second nick of time, he accelerated out of the way, and the whole procession passed us by, 
going down Canal Boulevard at a high rate of speed. Now, I've been a policeman for a week. And we join in in the procession. We cross the tracks below every intersection all the way up Canal Boulevard. When we get to Highway 1 at the Burger King, there's a red light. And so someone who's heading north on Highway 1 pulls out and clips the truck. And the truck veers over onto the bridge, hits the guardrail, veers over to the other side, hits the other guardrail, flips over, and is spinning on its top in the middle of the, the bridge. And then all the policemen stop and they get out with guns and rifles and they're yelling and they, they got this truck surrounded. Keith gets out. And I'm there thinking, I'm really going to like this job. <laughs> Sadly, though, the next time Keith and I would work together would be the night of his, of his injury, February 19th, 1980. It was Mardi Gras Day. It was a Tuesday. We'd had a good Mardi Gras in the city of Thibodeau. All the parades had proceeded without any incident. The parades had ended, but it being a holiday, people were out, and there were large crowds. Ronald Benoit was the shift supervisor that night, and he asked if anyone would be interested in working extra because we knew we would need more manpower. Keith had done his tour of duty. He was working day shift. He was free to go home. But instead, he said, I'll work late. Keith was a three-year veteran. He was a policeman's policeman. He was dedicated. He was loyal. He was ambitious. He was motivated. He was committed. There's nothing that he wouldn't do as a police officer to help the people. And so he was out that night. And shortly after 10 o'clock, we were called to a bar room where a man had committed a battery, a domestic violence battery on a woman, and he was inside the bar. So Keith and Ronald Benoit, Buddy Sanamon and Wayne Dagg went in the bar, they identified the perpetrator, they arrested him, and they were leading him out of the bar. And they were within a few steps of the front door to take him here to the police department to be processed when the perpetrator who was sitting at the bar got off his bar stool, took a revolver from his waistband, and at point-blank range emptied the entire chamber into the police officers. Striking Keith in the back, striking Ronald, striking Buddy, and Wayne was lucky enough not to be hit. Keith immediately went down and was paralyzed. And as I, I relive this story in that night, I think of the terror that had to be going through this man's mind as he's incapacitated, as he's very severely injured, not sure if he's going to live. And there are hundreds of people who are in pandemonium, who are panicking and terrified, and they're trampling over him as they're trying to make out of the bar. Luckily, first aid finally did arrive, and Keith was taken to the hospital. And for many months, for many, many months, he was treated for his injuries so he could be rehabilitated, but he knew that he would never walk again. Keith did not look at that as an obstacle. Keith never wavered in his commitment to the city of Thibodeau and to the Thibodeau Police Department. For the next 28 years, Keith Chasson showed up every day, worked through several police chiefs, many mayors, probably a bunch of gnats, <laughs> and did a tremendous job and rose through the ranks to be a captain. He never let a single obstacle get in the way of his positive attitude and his commitment to public service and to the people that he loved and to the people that he worked with. If there was one disappointment that I'm aware of, it's this one. Keith was betrayed by the criminal justice system. Because the man who killed Keith Shasoff, the man who shot him and Ronald and Buddy, is alive today and has been up for parole on three or four occasions. I can remember Keith calling me. He was mortified and in despair, believing that this person, who he was told would spend 150 years incarcerated for the rest of his life, would have an opportunity to argue for his freedom. Ronald is dead. Ronald Benoit has passed away. Buddy Sanma has passed away. Wayne Dagg has passed away. And Keith Chasson has passed away from the injuries 
that he suffered in the line of duty. Yet his killer remains free, or remains alive, hoping to be free one day. Keith suffered greatly because of the betrayal of the criminal justice system. And every time there was a parole hearing, he and his family and friends would write letters and they would get support and they would drive up to Baton Rouge and confront his killer and he is still incarcerated today. It is an honor for me to have worked with Keith, to have considered Keith a friend, and to see that this monument is being erected so that people will remember who he was and what he stood for. It's a tribute to Keith as a man and as a police officer. It's also a reminder to all of the policemen, the state troopers, the deputy sheriffs, the policemen currently and in the future, that every day when they're out there protecting and serving, they have to be vigilant and that the danger is real. And you might not die for 28 years, but the danger is real. And it's a testament to the citizens of Thibodeau and the people that come to the city of Thibodeau and live here that there are true American heroes in their midst. And I appreciate the quote that's on there that says that it's not how you die that makes you a hero, it's how you live. So thank you all for being here to support our hero. Thank you, Craig. We also, this evening, want, would like to call up uh, a friend uh, of ours uh, who worked with, uh, with Keith for a number of years and uh, had the privilege to, to be with him probably uh, uh, right before he passed away. And, uh, and it's hard for me not to call him Chief, so uh, I'd like to call up our former Chief, Mr. Craig Melanson. Chief, thanks for being here this Well, thank you so much. Uh, my story with Keith, I retired here in uh, the year 2010. Five years ago, it's hard to believe that that many years have gone by. But I did serve a great deal of time here at the police department, got to know Keith uh, more personally, if you would. I first met Keith in the 1970s. Uh, he worked for my father. And Keith would come by the house uh, to meet with my dad and uh, take care of business and then move on. Uh, when Keith came, let me tell you this story, that this is something that has stayed with my family. My wife and I have a very special uh, relationship, if you would, to this incident. Stephanie and I have been married 35 years. We got married February 16, 1980. We left on our honeymoon. Uh, when we came back, one of my brothers uh, made comment to me. He said, did you hear what happened in the police department? I said, no, of course not. He talked about the shooting, the devastation of the shooting. And it wasn't long after that I was I was talking to my dad and you know my dad was just devastated by this. You're, you're talking about a man that had given his life right after World War II. He's a state trooper. Uh, he worked for Humble Law, which is now Exxon. His entire life had been in some form or fashion as a police officer. And this was by far the most tragic event that he had ever participated in or had happened on his watch, if you would. Uh, so anyway, my dad asked me if I would uh, bring him to Auschwitz Hospital. He wanted to go see Keith. And that's where he was first flown when he left here. Uh, we went, and I kind of stood to the back of the room. And I don't remember, Debbie and Linda, you and I were talking about this. I don't remember you being there. I guess I was just so caught up in the moment. But my dad was talking to Keith, and Keith asked him what time it was. Uh, and my dad told him and then took his watch off and put it on his wrist. Uh, you had to know my dad. He was a man of few words, and when he spoke, he usually had something to say, especially to his sons. I've never seen him that devastated. We were all the way back to Thibodeau, and I don't think my father spoke 10 words. Uh, and then became this, this tragedy. He retired in June of 1980, that year, and never forgot. Spoke of Keith all the time. So let's fast forward a little bit. Uh, it's 1988, end of 87. I'm hired on with Thibodeau PD. I, again, I've known Keith all these years, but just in everyday life. I come in, and now this is a second-generation Melanson. I'm concerned about this, that I have to come in, and I want to do a good job, and I want to be professional, and I want these guys to think that I'm my own man, and I'm going to take care of my own business. So Keith says, come sit down, Craig. I want to share some things with you. Got me real comfortable. We talked a little while. He said, hold on a minute. He reached behind him, and he threw a four-foot rubber snake at me. 
And I want you to know I almost remodeled that detective bureau right there. So my pride was shot, got up, and then I realized. Keith reminded me of the danger of the job, and he would remind you of that. But I also knew there was going to be great humor uh, and great satisfaction in the career. So as the years go by, um, you know, Keith and I eventually uh, started working together. I became police chief. And I want to say this. There's so much I want to tell you tonight, but I'm going to kind of back off a little bit. Uh, before there was an IT department, the police departments, like a lot of businesses, were moving into, you know, current technologies. We didn't have an IT department at the police department. You had a Keith Chasson division. And a lot of this was kind of learn as you go. And what Keith would do would study is hard and then bring that knowledge to the table and we could implement software programs. And today what you see in the city of Thibodeau, the work of so many generations before us and what have you. Keith being a primary focus of that. Uh, you have a great technology system for law enforcement. The LEDS program, which is interoperability, all your departments in the region. Keith was on the forefront of that, doing his job right here in the building. So we appreciate that. I want to make a comment about the family. Uh, Keith loved you guys more than you can imagine. I just saw a couple of his nephews. They're no longer small. They're big and fine young men now. But he loved you. He talked about you. And as you know, everything we did as a police department, you guys were part of it. You know, I, I thought about Debbie, you know, about Keith. You guys, you were 20 years old when Keith was shot. Keith was 23. Linda was 13 years old. And uh, Jeannie, I, don't, I didn't ask you your age, but y'all were all very, very young at the time. I mean, I don't see Ricky. I don't know where Ricky's at. Hey, Rick, I'm sorry. All you guys were young. But you know, this was such, just, this was a horrible incident. And here you, uh, three years dating Keith, or three years longer, stood by his side, uh, devoted, brought him through this terrible time. And, uh, you know, you guys get married and stayed married 25 years, which is a testament to the love that you had for one another. If we had a roundup or the guys had to come out early because of something we were dealing with, we would often say in my office, we had to get up at 4.30 to be here for this roundup. Keith had to get up at 3.15, and Debbie had to get up with him. And every day, every day, every day, he was tough, he was resilient, he was dedicated, and he was the patriarch of his family. He would not let this guy take away from him being the, the leader and the patriarch of his family to take care of business, to make sure his, you know, his family was raised properly, provided, so forth and so on. Amy, here you are now, you're 29 years of age. Uh, I know that you're working on your master's degree or you're thinking about working on your master's degree, uh, but your dad was so proud of you then. Uh, I know that he'll be so proud of you today. So do not lose sight that you've got a great legacy behind you. Your family legacy is one to be so proud of. I was sitting with Linda today, and I know the nights are bad, I'm almost finished. <laughs> I was sitting with Linda and I'm trying to, I, I want just to get caught up on some things, you know, the family, the names, the losses. And as Linda and I were talking, uh, you know, Linda had a, a great relationship with him because they worked together so long. Linda was here and they just, uh, his little sister was here with him. And just over Linda's shoulder, I noticed a picture of Keith, the one you see on that pamphlet, in that pamphlet. And depicted in the frame of that picture, Linda has put, my hero. And I couldn't help but think what an appropriate thing for you to put. But it also talks about the degree of love and support and what, a, what an impression he had on his youngest sister, which is so important, you know. So I know you loved him a great deal. So I'll close with this. Keith was, he was a good assistant chief. We had our bad days, but we had more good days. Keith was not a yes man. Keith would tell you what you needed to hear, whether you like it or not. So we had some times when we disagreed, but it was always constructive. And by the end of the day, we could walk out and leave all those differences behind, come in the next day and get on with the business of protecting the community. He loved this department more than I can express to you. It was a major part of his life. Eventually, it took his life. So Keith was, he was tough, and you need to know as I look at this monument, uh, one other thing, in 2008, Keith was inducted into the National Monument in Washington, D.C., and his name shines in, in, on the mall in Washington, which is a, a good reminder. So, But I just want to say that uh, let this memorial be something to remind you that uh, we remember, we appreciate everything that he has done and you've done as a family, and uh, we love you guys. Thank you.
And you know, we go back and do a little research. We go back and find out how many actual uh, officers were killed in the line of duty, not only by state, but even by community. And I guess the good thing is, unfortunately, that he is the only Thibodeau police officer who was ever killed in the line of duty. Somebody asked the other day, well, is, is the monument for, for any future officers? Well, hopefully we will never add to that name. Uh, but in all honesty, uh, you know, uh, it's... it's uh, it's been a, it was a privilege to work with Keith, although I wasn't in, in law enforcement with him. I go back to, to 1982 uh, when I started, and, and, uh, and just like, like Craig said, it was a labor of love. It was all about passion for law enforcement. It's what got him up every day and brought him to work. Uh, again, you know, uh, the fact that, that he made it for that long, what, what a true testament to his passion and love for the city of Thibodeau. But I'd like for you to do just briefly, because not everybody here knows Keith's family. I know you're going to hate me for doing this, but could you all just stand up for a second uh, and we'll show uh, he does, his family does have a presence here tonight. And thank you so much for being here to, to share the dedication with us. Thank you so much. Now I'd like to call on Mr. David Melanson for our uh, closing prayer. Thank you, David. We can all bow our heads. Lord Jesus, our heart breaks whenever we get the call or hear of one of our brothers or sisters being killed in the line of duty. We not only feel the pain and the reality of it because we too wear the uniform, but we know that there's a family that's going to go on without their loved ones. Just like we felt this pain 25 years ago and this department still remembers that tragedy, this family still carries that burden. And Father, as we honor Captain Keith Chasson tonight. I pray that his legacy would live on in his family and in the men and women of the Thibodeau Police Department. And Lord, I pray that you would not only stop the violence against the police officers, but that you would stop the violence on our streets against one another. That you would bring peace to our homes, to our neighborhoods. Raise up godly men and women to lead us in that direction. We ask you this in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Again, thanks so much for being here, and a special thank you to the entire family for being here tonight, and, and for all of his friends uh, that are here tonight, for everyone who's sharing tonight in our Night Out Against Crime. Uh, hopefully, this will be our last inductee in, in, in this hall, that we'll never have to put another plaque here again.